Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Courtney Pegram, and I want to create this short video to bring you some insights and resources and help as we're transitioning into phase one of reintegration after this pandemic. I've been talking to my clients a lot and I've had a lot of meetings regarding what are some topics or some critical points that need to be mentioned. I could put a ton of documents together and resources, but sometimes just the face-to-face -face and putting things into practice can spark some ideas. So this video is best suited for managers, leaders, small businesses. Um, it's gonna give you strategies and tips to somehow figure out how you can start prepping for phase one, phase two, and phase three of reintegration. <clears throat> At Pegram Consulting, we're offering a program to help with the meeting facilitation, the training aspect, and implementation of your policies and procedures. I'm not here to, <clears throat> to talk about my program, but I'm gonna give you the baseline of what I'm providing so that you know where I'm coming from. So here's what I recommend. Right now, there's going to be a lot of anxiety and uncertainty is a daily word that comes up constantly. What we need to do as leaders is start thinking of ways to increase psychological safety in our workplace, our organizations, and our team. If you're like, I, I, how do I do that? It's taking uncertainty and creating a platform that is safe and secure in that moment for your employees. We are living in a time of transition where we don't know if anything will ever be the same. I can say what I think, that things are gonna be different from now on. A lot of things are changing and we don't have the answers. And when we don't have the answers as leaders, it really can create fear in our employees. So it's important to create habits, structure, and being consistent in the message that we're delivering daily, weekly, quarterly to our employees. To increase psychological safety, we have to be a little more vulnerable as managers and as leaders and being understanding. We need to be able to put ourselves in someone else's shoes and also be open and not have any hidden agendas when it comes to delivering updates, new policies or procedures. When we start hiding information and miscommunicating, it creates anxiety and uncertainty and it can really rock your teams where there's conflict, toxic relationships, resentment, and especially virtually, that's what you want to avoid. Another way to increase psychological safety is creating check-ins, right? Where you ask questions that are open-ended, one-on-one, or small meetings with your team to get to really to the basic of what they're doing. How are they feeling? What are they doing? What are they thinking? And then what can you do for them? And what can they do for themselves? is a great conversation starter to start setting expectations, guidelines, and habits in place for your team. As we move more into phase one and phase two of reintegration, we have to address the emotional crisis that happened. Everyone was told to stay at home and we listened and we did this. I know as a business psychologist, the first thing that happens when the transition occurs is high levels of anxiety, resistance, right? And sabotage. What is going to happen in our teams is as we move forward to phase one and phase two, things are really uncertain. Things are going to change daily and people might not react well to that. So being prepared. You may be like, how, how, how do I even prepare for this? It's about the way that you deliver the message. It's how consistent you are in delivering certain amount of information. There are certain things through all of this that are going to remain constant. Make sure that you're clear what is constant and what is changing to your team. Addressing their emotions about anxiety, about fear, anger, right? And then addressing what is uncertain within your company, but always ending with what is certain, right? We might not know what provides us tomorrow, but we know today that we are here and we have these things and these are the accomplishments we have and here are the shout outs I want to give to my team. That creates a place where people feel a little more safe, a little more secure. We're all clear that things are changing, but we don't know how it's gonna roll out. So it's really important to take the time to talk to your employees and explain what's going on to the best of your knowledge. Being open, honest, and authentic can bring you really far as a leader. 
Sometimes if you don't have the answers, it's okay to say, I don't know, but let me find out for you. Let me be there for you. When it comes to transitioning into phase one and phase two, the last thing that we need to think about is the how to. How do I deliver the information? How do I keep people accountable? How can I track progress? Those are systems that are easy to implement. We just need to figure out when am I doing it? Who's in charge? What does the system look like? And then how can I do regular check-ins? If you're like, I'm a leader, I don't have time for this. It's the time that you take up front as we're moving into phase one and phase two that can save you dollars, money, right? and people. When we take care of our people during pandemics, during tra trauma, during crisis, when we put our people first, it pays off in the long run because we develop a culture of care and concern and people become loyal, compassionate, and they show up. So I really want to leave you with those thoughts of what can you do as we transition from phase one to phase two to phase three in this reintegration of COVID-19. There's a lot of uncertainty, but one thing is for sure is if you can leverage your strengths as a leader, as a manager, and you can identify things that you can provide for certain for your team as things are so uncertain around you, you can create trust, right? psychological safety, and build a team that is going to be loyal and supportive. So please reach out to me if you need any services, help, or resources. I am here during this period for you, and I would love to be, even if it's just a, a sounding board as we go through these, these transitions. So thank you for, so much for listening to me. If you like this video, please share your thoughts and feedback, and you can find me at my website is cordypeager.com or pegramconsulting.com. We have a list of all our programs and services, and I'm here for you. Thanks so much. Take care. Stay safe and sane.